Hello, and welcome to the M2 Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lancey. My co-host right here is Kyle Heath. This is the show where we cover last week's gaming industry-related news. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about Atari. We're going to mention a little bit of Ubisoft, endless amounts of job layoffs and cuts that they keep doing. Um, Xbox Game Pass is changing up a little bit. And then, of course, we got to talk about Gamescom that happened this week. But before we get into it, Kyle, what have you been up to, man? How you doing? I, I was complimenting you earlier before we started recording. Love the shirt. You're crushing Thanks, it, dude. dude. Thanks. I had to get it on record. I, I love this shirt, too. It's nice. I've been, I've been trying to add, incorporate more collars in the wardrobe, you know? Um, Very nice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a good week. I played a little bit more of... um. Oh, my gosh. Why is the name leaving me? It's the game I talked about last week. I can't even think of the name of it. Mm. Uh, it wasn't Smite. That wasn't Smite. What game were you playing last Dude. week? Dude. Oh, my gosh. Was it a two-player, single-player game? No, single like player. co-op? It was a single-player, like, Souls-like. Why am I forgetting that name? Flintlock. Gosh. Why was oh, yeah, Flintlock. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they came out not too long ago. You said it was on Game Pass, right? Yeah, yeah, it was on Game Pass. I played a little bit more of that. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of the combat a little bit. Um, That's good. But I didn't have, like, too much time to play, so it was maybe, maybe like, an hour, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I, a little more practice. I think I'll be. Uh, I think I'll be a lot better. But, but yeah, dude, I was. Uh, I mean, in terms of gaming, I don't. Know, I think it was really like all I ended up playing this week was just a little bit of that. Um, it's not bad. Nothing too much else, you know. I don't know. It's. I don't know. I guess sports season, and it's gonna get even crazier now that we're at the end of August. So it's like, I don't know. Man. Very true. It's, you know, just trying to find the time and getting ready for, you know, the bigger releases. I guess you could say. But. Well, well, there was a big release today at the yeah. time of the recording. Um, Black Myth Wukong. Have you watched any oh, gameplay yeah, of it? Yeah. yeah, I've seen some gameplay of it. Yeah, it's, it looks um, pretty good. I Yeah, I saw. I think I saw a Twitter post of reviews, of like early reviews already, and it's like it's like every Souls like, it's like 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's just across the board. Everyone loves it. So. Yeah, I've so, seen a lot of people say it's going to be game of the year. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise so, me, dude. That's they, good. Those games are just in. And they have been for a couple of years now, so it's like, just yeah. yeah. Since I would say like since 2020, they've been in, yeah, and like heavily. So th- that's what it's pretty cool because it's like it's destroying the myth that you have to have to have multiplayer battle royale. It's like yeah. no, you don't. <laughs> like yeah. you just need a good story and create a vision. So yeah. and a good combat system that's rewarding. You know. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all you need, dude. It's all you need, man. No, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's I I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't have too many other updates. I don't think. I was just playing a little bit of that. Just kind of like what's that? Chilling out no shame that. So yeah, dude. Um, but I mean, I know I know my boy Mike's been playing some games. I know this I've been guy, grinding dude. games. I heard it. No, this guy's. <laughs> well, I've It's more about like grinding a game, less about multiple games. You know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like there are a couple of things going on with me. It's um, not much different than the last time we we like really recorded a podcast, but. It, I've been getting absolutely smoked in Counter Strike. Uh, nice. I'm having fun. Like I love that game. It's just it's addicting, dude. <laughs> it's so sim- smoked, <laughs> simplistic. Yeah, and I, I get I get cooked every time I play it. Uh, but the big thing is is with with the Halo Two Anniversary Land being announced in Las Vegas, I was very excited. So I've been playing way more OG, way more like Cartographer and stuff like that, which is the PC version of Halo Two just like playing as much as I can because it's just interesting to me and I've been still playing Halo 3 I've been streaming a lot more I've noticed more and more people starting to watch uh I might actually be because one of the dudes called me a cheater in the insignia (laughs) discord and for those of you that don't know what insignia is it's basically a um an aftermarket uh Xbox live from back in the day somebody pulled the servers back up and they reinvented the wheel kind of thing so you can now go play like old school Halo 2, old school matchmaking and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, some dude <laughs> said I was cheating and I had to post on Twitter. I was like, this is <laughs> yeah. I told the guy, I was like, I'm not cheating. There were a couple of people that vouched for me. I mean, I'm not I'm not that good of a player, but I'm not the worst kind of thing. Uh, it's I like mean... the guys that I play against are way better than me. But it's like somebody that hasn't played in a while, I'll destroy them. You know, yeah. it's yeah. true, dude. It's compliment. Um, it's the ultimate compliment in the competitive game. So. It's not the yeah. first time I've been accused. I've been accused in pretty much every Halo at this point. Halo <laughs> Infinite was the worst, though, because I got accused then, and 
uh, they had to have like two tournament officials watch my gameplay and i was like dude i'm streaming <laughs> like you go watch that and they're like no you need to stream to discord it was like my game's unstable like i'll start struggling really bad in discord they're like well you have to do it anyway and it's like okay whatever man oh well, there whatever. you go <laughs> yeah it's so dumb it is what it yeah. is though yeah. uh but the thing that's got me excited is one wukong came out so i, I kind of want to go play that um I, i'm gonna I, I don't even know what the price is it's probably like 60 bucks 67 bucks uh, that's on my radar uh right now splitgate 2 is an alpha and i actually have one of the monitors up specifically to watch on twitch because they're doing twitch drops for codes there you so go. big into big into splitgate i'm hoping that because like halo infinite isn't really popular anymore i'm hoping that like the halo players can come back to an arena shooter that's a little bit more different in terms of skill based so yeah. it's like it, like halo it's like you got to concentrate more on shooting in split gates like you got to be precise with your decision making on teleporters so yeah. i i, I want to see i want to see that game become successful i don't know if it will um i do like their development team so i'm kind of bullish on it you know yeah, yeah they, they seem like good dudes got to hit up the team dude yeah. I'm talking to him on the pod, you know what I'm saying? That'd be kind of crazy. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he liked my tweet. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe I should reach out to him. That'd be kind of cool. that'd be kind of yeah. cool. Get like a development sick. member out here, yeah. community management guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, I, I miss outside of that, game. dude, it's like, it kind of. Are you dude. gonna get on it? Will I, I mean, I definitely want to try it out again. Like Splitgate Two, I'd yeah, hundred percent. I'll try it out. It's like a. I think the only thing for me is like that. Like it played really great. I just I like I know especially when the game was first out like. The animation for like the portals and everything like the arm looks so clunky it was just like Doom. yes <laughs> it was like very just like i don't know stiff I, I don't know what it was have you watched the gameplay recently no okay so it's still kind of clunky in terms of like the, it it's, looks it looks unpolished because it's an alpha right yeah, but it's right. still mm -hmm. based on the original game um now it looks smoother. It looks like they gave them abilities so they can run faster or something. It just, it's way more intense. Like I was watching one streamer that just happened to have like a huge following playing the game for the first time. So he had like his base already there. Uh, and he was the most viewed person in the category. And I'm watching him and I'm just like, you're not using the portals. You're like treating this like it's COD. You're like running around. I was like, okay, you can play that way. I'm not going to tell you how not to play. But it's like, you can teleport across the map, bro. Like you should yeah. use teleporters. <laughs> Then I immediately switch over to this guy that's been playing Splitgate since it came out, and he's cooking people. He's like yeah. showing it's it's quite quite literally like people don't understand how the game fundamentally changes when the positions on the map can you literally teleport from one side of the map to the other. Yeah. But you can follow them. It's not like a one thing ability. It's it's very interesting, and I think um there's a lot of upside to it. Very unique. Um there's a couple other games that came out. We covered the last one that, like, what was it? Like, League of Legend hero-based third-person shooter. That yeah, was kind of cool. Dude. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So there's, like, more and more games coming out that are going to be very interesting. But if we're going back to OG real quick, it's like I bought a couple of things to try to clean off the controllers, uh, repair the uh, potentiometers in the joysticks because it has, like, okay. stick drift and stuff. So I'm hoping I can make some improvements to that. Um, but that's basically what I've been up to, man. That yeah. watching sports, watching a buttload of YouTube, and learning yeah, a bunch of random things. Yeah, same here. Bro, we're like, like the same yeah. person, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, so our algorithms are pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, one thing I do want to mention is, uh, like, I, I we're not covering it today because Gamescom is a little bit more important. But I mentioned it to you right before we started recording is that Avid Media, um, game doc for like all your different tablets for your Steam Deck for your. Uh, what are the other brands? Logitech has one, like Lenovo Go and stuff like that. All those different tablets where you can do cap, like it has a capture card built into it, but it's a docking station station and as natively you're natively in the device can save recordings yeah, on like an SD drive. It's like insane. And I'm thinking I kind of want to get it. Although it's 200 bucks. I kind of want to get it because <laughs> my, I spilled like all this water on top of my, uh steam deck like adapter Dang. and i haven't turned it on in like over a week because i'm afraid <laughs> you know Man. oh yeah. dude that's rough that's rough maybe you start anyways up. I, who knows or it's just water for the best <laughs> yeah or, or i can always try to clean it off with like 
I got some like Over. alcohol swabs. I can wipe it all off. Hopefully yeah. that helps. Maybe. Hopefully, dude. Hopefully. Yeah. Let's get into it, man. Let's uh let's get into the news. I agree. I'm done ranting. I agree. Yeah, let's we got a lot to cover. So listen. We're starting off this week with a new a new console. Well, a re a reimagining of a classic, I guess that's it's I guess I should say, you know. So the Verge brings uh brings this article. So Atari's new 7800 console remake can also play your old Atari 2600 cartridges. You heard that correctly. This is from uh, Jess Weatherbed over at The Verge. I don't Jess? Is Jess new? I feel like I haven't heard that name. I Jess. think it is new. Anyways. So. Weatherbed. The Atari 7800 Plus will officially hit shelves later in 2024. A nice little picture of it at the, at the little hero image at the top of the article. So Atari has a treat for those who, those of you sitting on a ca- on a cachet of Atari's 7800 game cards, a new compact recreation of the classic home console, complete with a backward compatibility. The company has teamed up with um, Playon Playon to announce the Atari 7800 Plus, which comes equipped with an HDMI port to connect to modern televisions, alongside support for both Atari 2600 and 7800 game cards, just like the original console. And so for those that don't know, the Atari 7800, very old console, but one thing about it was, it was obnoxiously big. Like, that thing was, like, a yeah. giant square, and, like, it was, ve- it, was, <sighs> it was kind of thin, but it was just so big, and that was, like, the thing, because I remember, like, seeing videos of it and see- finally seeing one in person, and it was just like that, dude, it was it, it was just obnoxiously it was, big. It was, uh, yeah, it was quite large. I'm trying to figure out the actual dimensions real quick. Um... But yeah, it was big. It came out in 1986. Yeah. So just kind of imagine that. I mean, they didn't. Yeah. They, there wasn't many. There wasn't really anything made like it. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, well, here, here you go. I, I I got it. Uh, eleven, eleven and three quarter inch wide. So basically a foot wide, nine inches deep, and three and a half inches tall. That's sure. like bigger than a lot of people's keyboards. Yeah. I mean, it's like, huge. It's, yeah. It was just like you couldn't. It was hard to like fit it entertainment centers and stuff because it's just like it's just, it was big but we continue so for uh, the 130 dollar atari 7800 plus is a available for pre-order now with a global release expected in winter of 2024 according to atari's press release like other mini console recreations the company has released in recent years the atari 7800 plus is visually identical to the original 1986 console aside from being shrunken down Players can also choose between running games in widescreen mode or 4x3 aspect ratio to, pre- to preserve the feeling of playing the retro hardware. There are two new wireless controllers launching alongside the 7800 Plus, the CX78 Plus wireless gamepad, a recreation of the console's original two-button controller, comes bundled with the Atari 7800 Plus, but can also be purchased separately for $35. The gamepad also wirelessly connects to the Atari 2600 Plus recreation released last year and can be connected to a PC via USB-C adapter. There's also a $35 CX40 Plus wireless joystick, which is sold separately and carries the same support. Atari touts that the 7800 Plus has near-perfect compatibility with original and third-party Atari games. Only one game is being shipped with the console itself, a specially designed cartridge for the Crystal Castle sequel, a Bentley Bears Crystal Quest. But 10 additional titles will be available to purchase separately for $30, and you can pre-order 7800 Plus at the link in the article, which will be linked in the description of our video. So, you know, it's a couple layers, but a couple <laughs> links, pre-order one. Um, yeah, dude, what do you think, Mike? A shrinking version. I mean, th- we've been seeing these for years now, right? Like, smaller versions of these consoles. NES, SNES. Yeah. Um, Atari's doing the same I, thing. I, well, what I do you saw think of- one not too long ago at the Goodwill that I, I went to yesterday looking for, like, OG stuff, retro, retro stuff. Okay. I don't know, man. Like, uh, I think it's mostly just going to be an emulator. It seems. Um, one of the things that might upset a lot of like old school fans is the fact that it's not authentic. You know what I mean? Like, authentic to the true gaming experience that was the Atari seventy eight hundred, where you have like the wired controllers, the original hardware on the original CRTVs. But it's like, yeah. I think people need to take a step back and realize it's like. Those consoles worked with the CRTVs back in the day. We don't have CRTVs anymore. You got to make it more modern. There's going to be issues with that. You can't have it like a one-for-one upgrade. 
I mean, technology has changed so much that it's like, I feel like, I don't know if this is true, but I think that like old hardware is now expensive to make because we don't have the manufacturing capabilities that we do anymore. Because all of those, like, like if you're making like the circuit boards that were the original 7800, it's, uh, it's like those have all been like repurposed or they've like gotten rid of those machines altogether. And now they create more yeah. modern hardware. So it just not it's not authentic, but for me personally, it's like I wasn't big into Atari. I didn't really get into games until like the nineties and my first real console was the Super Nintendo. So yeah. it's to me that's like before my time. So I don't know any difference. I this would be interesting for me. Or like interesting for people that have I don't know, have you ever been to those like land centers where they have retro gaming stuff, like arcades and pinball machines and stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like this would be a good addition for that, I think. Yeah. I mean, I would agree. It's like, look, I mean, especially if you have a lot of like I mean, older hardware, like you're saying, you can get like you can get older hardware on eBay, you don't necessarily know if it'll work well. It's expensive well, though. It's expensive. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like yeah. this is this is probably a good alternative because you can just play all 2600, all 7800 like on one thing. It's very compact. It's probably the way to do it, honestly. <laughs> if you're trying to play yeah, those old I, games though. Yeah, I think this is more like a casual take because if you're going to buy the system, I'm pretty sure, can't you buy those, like, handheld? They're, they look like they're the size of a Game Boy. Yeah. And they come with pretty much every game that's ever been made before the year 2000. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, those exist. But, yeah, they're, those are emulators. They're not authentic, right. of course. Right. There are problems with emulators, but it just depends on, like, what you want to get, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who they're trying to appeal to, <laughs> is yeah, what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, literally just kind of a, Casual person wants to experience the old consoles that doesn't necessarily care about original hardware. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's uh, there's just enough of a market for it. They're making it, so I mean, I'm sure, it's a thing. But yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I mean, I think that's the. I mean, the most impressive thing is you could just play the old cards. I mean, that's at least for me anyway. It's the most impressive thing. So yeah, um, yeah. That that 100 percent is going to be key for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and playing them with HDMI. I mean, that's. Awesome too, because you know these modern TVs. You have dude, to do that, ain't, man. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't using dude. like any old stuff, right? Okay, oh I, no! I'm plugging a cable in and doing like an RC adapter. Like, what is this? Oh my gosh! I I have one of those RCA to HDMI adapters. They are trash. Yeah. They also make uh, components to HDMI. They're not good either. Yeah. Like going from analog to digital, there's a massive loss. I can yeah. talk about that for hours because of the Xbox. Yeah, but it's not the best, yeah, they don't but... make TVs like that anymore. I don't even think. Now my TV in the other room is like from 2015, and that is kind of a long ways away. It's a cheap Insignia brand, like the Best Buy brand, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. not it's not that good at all. I got it because it was cheap and it was like pretty big for the living room just to watch stuff. And that thing doesn't even have component or composite cables, like ports yeah, for it. it. Don't surprise me. I mean, it's all HDMI. Yeah, like I have an older Vizio and like an older like uh, it's a really just there's one that's like a brand. It was like one of those like super budget brands, <laughs> and it was like yeah. it's okay, but it has like I think it does have composite still, but it was like but that, that thing's like 15 years old. This guy behind me right here up on the wall near uh, the Halo Two sword. Yeah. It's um a Vizio from 2007. It's the first dude. In high school, this is how old I am. I <laughs> bought that with my first ever paycheck, and it took all of my paycheck. <laughs> it did the That's whole funny, thing. It's funny. Yeah, I bought that for uh, like right before Halo Three released. I was so excited. But yeah, that that has component cables. I think the audio on it is completely dead though. Oh yeah. So it's like the, these these devices, these like TVs are dying. I mean, yeah. there's only a certain amount of hours that CRT can actually handle. So yeah. they're going to die over time and you need to have these consoles that can actually output HDMI f for the new hardware. Yeah. I mean, it's only it a matter of time until we see it with display port. Imagine that. So, yeah. Oh, uh, it's, yeah, it's going to get crazy, but, but yeah, um, I have an old Vizio too. I like said it's probably around the same time. It was my, my, I remember my parents bought it. And so, and then I later inherited it and now. It nice. just like kind of sits here. I don't really use it, but <laughs> it's yeah. one of those things. It's like I, it's like I don't want to give it up or like throw it away because I'm like somewhere like I got nostalgia for it, but I don't know. Probably at some point I'll have to. 
Divisio used to be top tier brand back in the day. Oh, yeah. It was made by a bunch of guys from MIT professors, and they found a way to make the best quality product um, with like the most efficient components. And then they didn't upcharge like a ridiculous price. Mm -hmm. So they were like by far the best and they were one of the cheapest, which is really fascinating. And then they got bought out and now they're kind of crap. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, it's just what happens. Yeah. It's like I have a Samsung out there, I'm pretty sure. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Samsung's cracked, dude. LG yeah. is ideally the one you want to go for because yeah. they're the ones that make the panels. Life's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they get like the LG is the best. The wall of, I seen like the giant. It's like oh, nano yeah, panels where it's like tiny. I want those. Uh, dude, <laughs> it's crazy, brother. It's crazy, but yeah. Dude, let's go, dude. Get a new Atari console today, everybody. Yeah, go check it out. Go, go check, check it, it out. out, dude. Ubisoft guys are checking out right now. Even more. Oh, it's man. crazy, dude. Ubisoft. You're always giving me this one. It's probably because I've been calling for their downfall for the last <laughs> year. Not even calling for it because I don't think they deserve it. I think it's just been a series of unfortunate events that's been happening over at ubisoft so this one's coming from uh michael gripe is it no gripe would be a g this is c-r-i-p-e gripe gripe creep i was gonna say creepy might be. but that's not creepy i think I it's know. i think gripe. i think when it's i i-p-e it's i right right i don't know i mean i like it i don't know michael over here over at uh ign wrote this article and it's titled um Ubisoft cuts 45 jobs in its U.S. offices. The publisher calls it a difficult yet necessary decision. Sheesh. Don't they all? Don't they all? Yeah, but I mean, like, this has been this has been a long time coming for a while now. Not just with this in particular, like, cutting 45 jobs, but the scope of Ubisoft has been in chaos, it feels like, this last year. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into what Michael had to say. So Ubisoft is the latest video game company to be hit with another wave of layoffs. As first reported by Bloomberg and later independently confirmed by IGN, 45 staff across the Assassin's Creed publishers San Francisco and Cary, North Carolina, locations were impacted by layoffs yesterday. Those affected will receive severance and career assistance, though further details about, that, uh, about what those offerings include have not been revealed. Eh, I mean, it's always good that they get severance and career assistance. That's the right thing to do. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm glad that's becoming more of a norm. It's a bare minimum, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Honest to God, it is. But it's just, it's good to see that it's actually happening. No. I don't know. True. There would be a reckoning if there wasn't, I think. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't stand for it, you know what I'm saying? So, a Ubisoft spokesperson said in a statement, and I'm going to quote all the way through, Yesterday, Ubisoft San Francisco and Red Storm Entertainment informed their teams of restructuring that resulted in 45 employees leaving Ubisoft. This difficult yet necessary decision was made to align these studios or organizations with their future businesses and development objectives. We are committed to providing comprehensive support to those affected, including severance and career assistance, and we thank them for their many contributions to Ubisoft. Oh, that's just standard corporate HR speak. So oh. this is the second shift oh. for the Red Sh Storm team this summer, with the first wave arriving in May, only a few months ago, uh, when Ubisoft announced that further development on its free-to-play spinoff, Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland, was canceled. At the time, the publisher called the move a, in quotes, tough call, but would transition those members of the development team to other projects like X Defiant and Rainbow Six. It's unclear how many members of the Red Storm team were affected by yesterday's uh, layoffs. Jeez, man. Red Storm's portfolio includes a number of noteworthy Ubisoft titles from the last few decades, including a number of entities or entries in the Tom Clancy and Far Cry franchises. The studio also recently developed a VR-only title, Assassin's Creed Nexus, which released last year. I don't even remember that one. I don't have VR, though. Um, Nexus. That's just me. Yeah. But uh, Ubisoft San Francisco branch developed titles in the Rocksmith series. Don't get me started on Rocksmith. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend a second to be really tilted. Okay. I bought Rocksmith, and yeah. they changed the coding in Rocksmith. I think it's like yeah, in the Ubisoft launcher, where you have to buy like a different version of the game or the membership of Ubisoft 
in order, like their you play crap. I don't even remember how many stupid tiers they have, but you <laughs> have to buy a tier in order to use the game. And it pissed me off to no freaking end, dude. I got so mad. I went to like, I went to the Goodwill on it because I was like, I desperately want to play this game. And I have an Xbox 360 over there. Rocksmith came out on the Xbox 360. It's an old game. Okay, admittedly. I bought a cable and I plugged it into my Xbox 360 and it said the same exact crap. It was like, you have oh. to have a Uplay account or like a Ubisoft account. I was like, dude, this is Xbox 360. This doesn't really exist anymore. And they do this crap on purpose to make it difficult. I only know this because I went to Reddit and people were furious and they were like, the only way to play this is you have to play the beta version. So switch the way you download the game. I'm like, no, I give up. Dude, eat my, eat my $5, it, bro. It's not even worth it, bro. It's just stupid. So Rocksmith stupid. Plus. Premium Plus, Mike. Premium Plus. Ultra. It, you know what's stupid about it, too? Is I'm, I'm like the next thing. So. I stopped right here. You said Ubisoft San Francisco branch developed titles in the Rocksmith series as well as South Park, The Fractured, which I actually heard was really good and it had good reviews. Um, but hold Obsidian, baby. So it's it's currently working on X Defiant. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and then Rocksmith Plus. I'm probably going to like simp up and go get Rocksmith Plus. And I want to plug in my ukulele over there. I want to see if I can do some 21 Pilot songs. Dude, hey, <laughs> speak my language. You know what I mean? Speak my language. Uh, I know dude, you yeah, love that I, band. I know, I really do. Um, yeah, I do. Honestly, Rocksmith, like, I think I got it on Steam like a long time ago. I've obviously not tried to play it in years, so I didn't know about the, all this. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was one of those things. Like, it's like I have a guitar. Like, might as well like play a game yeah, that actually uses a guitar, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I want to give it a shot. So that that definitely is something to look into. I may need to get one of those cables though. Oh yeah, see, I, I bought like one on Amazon. It said it works with Rocksmith, and then I plugged it into the Xbox 360. It didn't work. Then I plugged it into the really? PC after I bought it on the PC, and then it was like, yeah, uh, you have to upgrade your membership. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'm just gonna be upset now. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mission accomplished. Yeah. Um, I I do know that Rocksmith is pretty good and it's fairly accurate. My buddy, who's a really good guitarist. Um, yeah. Admittedly, he, he doesn't play as much as he used to. I mean, that's just what happens as you get new hobbies, you move on. Yeah. But he can still absolutely play really well and on like on point. So he was playing some like pretty difficult songs, and it was keeping track. It was it was fairly accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked him, I was like, "Have you ever experienced errors?" He was like, "I mean, there are a couple of he goes, there are a couple of times where I felt like I would have been in a different spot on the fretboard, but I mean, it's all the same in a way." Okay. So I bet. I yeah. gotta try this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rocksmith um, might be the play. I wonder when. Just out of curiosity, since we're talking about Ubisoft here, when do you think Rocksmith Plus is coming out? I have no have they even announced that? Is it out right now? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I get. I guess. I guess it's always been out. Oh my gosh, the ratings two out of ten, bro. Thanks. <laughs> That's on Steam though. Yeah. Thanks overwhelmingly negative oh yeah, exactly. man I can do no, oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's, it's all negative because it's not free to play and it's subscription based model where it's $20 a month 20 a month yeah I just died for those listening to the audio that's why you didn't hear me say anything <laughs> yeah yeah this is pretty much what it is it's, a, it's everything that yeah okay so the upgrade of membership that I was referring to is a monthly subscription. So my th that's that's why I was really upset. And then I went online and everybody was... It's basically getting review bombed into oblivion. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's, it's really Nukum. bad. Nukum. The sad thing is, is it's like, it's actually not a bad game. No, but no, here's the sure. problem. They, they advertise it as free to play. No, see, but then when you get up. it, you have to have the monthly membership that's of like the Ubisoft. Nice yep. So that's why people are upset because they don't know Idiots, that like Ubisoft dude. has their own servers and crap. Very frustrating. Oh, that's depressing, dude. But hey, let me uh let me finish the last paragraph here. So Ubisoft laid off a number of employees across a few separate instances last year. Um, with 60 affected in May and another 124 in November, it's part of a trend of industry-wide cutoffs. We already know this. Affected thousands of game developers in the last year. Um, there were layoffs in NetherRealm Studios, Take Two, Humble Behavior. I mean, and Bungie. I, most of these we've all pretty much covered. There's some from software combating layoffs as well being mentioned here. 
Um, the ending of these articles at IGN are always like, please click these links to go to the other articles I wrote. (laughs) Check out (laughs) other stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you got to keep people around. But yeah, I um, I think this just comes back down to what I was saying earlier at the beginning of the year. It's all going to come down to Star Wars Outlaws, which is it this month, right? Yep. In a week, Star Wars Outlaws, August thirtieth. So I think the entire. I don't want to say the entire developer. I think like Ubisoft, as we know it, will be changed forever after the release of Star Wars Outlaws. If it is a success, they will survive. If it is a complete and utter flop, they're going to be selling a lot of IPs and they're going to be laying off a buttload of people. I don't know. What, what's your take, Kyle? What do you think? Listen, dude. Ubisoft. Y'all are kind of cowards, bro. I'm just going to say it. Like, what is this like statement at the beginning of the article? It's all corporate speak, not given a definite reason, even though like us as like video game news, like pundits at this point, like we understand the, the, you know, I was going to say proclivities. I feel like I'm getting too like vocabulary to the point where it's just like, I'm just not making sense. Bro, that's a word I can't listen. spell. <laughs> <laughs> but like, listen, dude, like we're, we're just, we're in this universe so we can kind of speculate and make educated guesses about what we think is going on, especially over what's, what's happening with Ubisoft over the past couple of years. Yep. But like, I just got to give credit to Bungie too. Cause remember like homie, even though he spent all that money on cars, bro, he, he just came out real. and he's like, listen, this is what happened. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. So I mean, I got to respect that. But it's like, I don't know, with this, it's just like, it's corporate, dude. So, you know, yeah. my, the, the uh, street, car- street cred respect, like, stuff went down a few ticks for me. But, I mean, it's Ubisoft. It's been going down for a while for me, so it's not a surprise. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yep. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, dude, look, Star Wars Outlaws, it better bang, dude. If it doesn't bang, then the company's going to go bang. And that's just, you know, not going to be good. We're going to... I think... Assassin's Creed, like, like, if it could be good, then... Hey, maybe there's something else, but I don't know. Dude. I mean, haven't so. they had a couple of? They've had a couple of back-to-back flops on Assassin's Creed. Well, I shouldn't say flops because it's like they sold copies, they made money off of no. them. Off of them. I mean, but they Odyssey and Origins didn't get the best or bad reviews though. Yeah, like Odyssey yeah. and Origins were bad. Valhalla was too long. It wasn't yeah. terrible, but it was too long. Like it was just a lot of bloat. And then you know you got you got Nexus, which is the VR game. I mean, it's VR, so obviously it's not as much coverage. I don't know if it was good yeah. or not. Maybe it was. Same. But um but yeah, I mean it's just like and then and then you have, dude, you have your favorite game, Mike, that came out earlier this year, dude. The pirate game. I, you already know, I baby. I still can't believe that came out. <laughs> Skull and Bones, which still has I, I seasons, was, which still is making yeah. content. I will um, be fair here, like I, I gotta admit when I was wrong because I thought for sure that game was gonna launch completely <laughs> busted or just and not trash. At all. Or like not not released at all. I thought it was a myth. I really did. So it came out. All, I've always already proven wrong, and then I said it was not even going to be good. And it was like, okay, apparently it's decent. It's not the greatest thing. It's not mm. what people thought it was going to be, but it's a game. Hey, it you only made took the finish like line. Fifteen years. Yeah, you did it. You yeah. got the. You did it. You did the yeah. marathon. So I mean, yeah, claps to you, bro. Fun. I just there's new content coming out, dude. This thing, it's a. Uh... Yeah, dude, it's it's you saw some rough around the edges for a long time, dude. It just gets worse. Um, it really is, yeah. But hey, man. I mean, look, and you know, like we obviously never call for anyone's downfall. Like we want, we no. want everyone to succeed, well, except for three. Uh, except mm, for three, four, three. Listen, dude, that's the only one. Well, this guy can speak for himself, right? But like, listen, <laughs> I, like I think for the most part, dude, we're we're trying to we're trying to get victory out here. Um, so yeah, I don't. It's a. Uh, I mean, yeah, I want him to do well, but I don't know here's yet another sign mike there it is yeah there's been tons of red flags and i think that's why we keep talking about it week in week out of just every time i think it's gonna be laid back there's not gonna be much news something happens something comes (laughs) out so next week we're gonna mention it again because it's gonna be the teasers and the previews and all the hype coming out for outlaws because we haven't really heard anything in a while we didn't even see anything at gamescom which is what we're gonna be talking at the end of the episode no so that's kind of I will say see what happens. I will say there were some people that did play Outlaws and they said it wasn't bad. They said it was good. Like they said the yeah. early kind of previews it wasn't they said they enjoyed it. There were some people that said You're like right. it was slow at first but grew on them, which you know, not yeah. the worst, <laughs> not the best, but not the worst. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's whatever. It could happen, dude. Like Days Gone is the ultimate example for me for a game that was slow start yeah. but just it was amazing. <laughs> and I wanted a second yeah. one after I was finished. So like, you know, 
we're never going to get a sequel to Days Gone, dude. And uh, another thing I've yet nope. to be depressed about, dude. Get a Val delayed. Mm. Days Gone 2 is not going to be a thing. Uh, yep. it's, it's I don't know. It's been kind of a rough month for me, Mike. I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, this, these video games, man. Okay? Like, I don't know. I hope so, man. It's just like, <laughs> it's just a lot. Dude. 2025 by the bang, though. It's going to be a killer year. I oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff coming out in 2025 that's going to be crazy. I mean, 2024 but... has been nuts, and it's not over yet, but 2025, yeah. though. I mean, look, we'll, we'll of course talk about it whenever we get to, um, you know, Gamescom, but also Indiana Jones, dude. Finally got a release date. There's just a lot to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It was December 10th, right? I think it was like 9th. I'm about to check my calendar real quick. Where's my calendar looking like? There's, a, there's three things coming out, the 9th, 10th, and 11th. 10th, I'm going to go see Under Oath. Yeah, I think it's 10th. Because I'm a boomer. 10th would make ten. sense. 10th would make sense. It's a Tuesday. I'm saying. Yeah, six would also make sense. It's a Friday, so I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. We'll find out we'll when we get to that segment, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah honestly. But how but about you take us to the next one? Um, not quite there yet. Bit of changes to uh, the Xbox Game Pass. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Listen, this is actually answering a question that I had when we started covering some of the changes to Game Pass. Um, and yeah, the pricing the tiers and kind of what's all going with that. Game Pass Ultimate is literally your ultimate at this point. Um, like. Day, day and day games, you're not getting on the lower tiers anymore. It's just ultimate. So left questions like, okay, are we ever going to get those like games at all with these tiers? Are they permanently locked and you have to get ultimate? So listen, this uh, we have an article here from Ethan Gatch, or at Kotaku, who uh, answered that question for us. He says, uh, it could take up to, drumroll please, 12 months or more. That's insane for some stuff to come to xbox game pass standard starfield and diablo 4's expansions could take a year to land on the cheaper subscription not making this up guys listen game pass standard a new middle tier of the netflix like subscription services ever expanding menu of options won't get some games that hit the higher tiers on day one for up to a year or longer microsoft revealed the cheaper version is going to going into preview mode for xbox insiders for one dollar ahead of its official launch in september Microsoft shared the caveat in a new rundown of the program over the Xbox Wire blog. Preview version goes live today for players who are members of the Xbox Insiders Initiative and more games being added to the Game Pass standard library throughout the preview period. So, while we still don't know exactly which games will be included in that tier of the program at launch, players should get a better idea in the days and weeks ahead. But the biggest question is still how long will it take for new games to get added to standard? Earlier this summer, Microsoft announced it's hiking the price of Game Pass Ultimate and creating a new tier called Standard that would not include the big games that hit Game Pass on day one of release, one of the big selling points of the service since its inception. So while Standard is 15 a month instead of Ultimate's 20, talk about $5 difference here. Yeah, but it adds up, doesn't it? It won't be getting... Six dollars more? We'll be getting Indiana Jones in the Great Circle, Diablo 4's Vessel of Hatred expansion the day they come out. Quote, and I quote, Some games coming to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, day one games or other game entries, will not be immediately available for the Game Pass standard and may be added in the library at a future date. Can be up to 12 months or more and will vary by title. Senior community lead Megan Spur wrote over at Xbox, Xbox Wire today, We'll continue to share with all Game Pass members when games are being added and available to play for each plan. It's unclear if this waiting period will be announced for each game ahead of release or will it be its own sort of mystery exclusivity period that fans have to speculate about when deciding if and when to subscribe to Standard vs. Ultimate. It's also possible that third-party day-and-date games like Frostpunk 2 could have launches that vary widely across both tiers. Pardon the pun, but it sounds it sounds like anything but standard. Mm, got him. Got him. Listen, the big shift in Game Pass comes days ahead of Call of Duty Black Ops 6's release in October. The first game in the hit multiplayer shooter series to get day and date release on a subscription gaming service. Likely the best selling game yet that will, be, that will have appeared on Game Pass. That's in stark contrast to last year when Xbox owners could play Starfield for the whole month starting the day it came out for just $11. Its upcoming expansion, Shattered Space, is now, will now require a $20 monthly subscription instead. Ooh, well, if it was just for one game, I would be like... Oh, sucks. But it's, <laughs> it's like... It's not, eh, you get all the other games, but you gotta be playing other games to like enjoy 
the subscription based model. Oh yeah. man, I don't know. I don't know. What do you what do you think, dude? Look, dude. I like Microsoft for a long time. We've touted their Game Pass so much on the yeah. show. We yeah. were such such fans, dude. Maybe we We really wanted the best. We really wanted the best. Oh god, dude. I feel like I'm warming up for a fight, dude. Listen. This is <laughs> feeling, feeling, uh, uh, feeling heated. Uh, like it's just it's just for the longest time, dude. It's just like I game like Game Pass, especially Game Pass Ultimate was such a good value. We knew the price was gonna increase. That's fair. It increases a but little bit. It, no, 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 no. They said they wouldn't increase it. That's the part that's irritating me. Phil Spencer did said they, they wouldn't. They? He said they they would not raise because the price. I, I mean, maybe a long time ago, but I thought it was always implied that, oh, eventually it's going to go up. No, no, no. It wrong? was implied that eventually it would go up, but he said within the first year or so of them acquiring Activision Blizzard, oh. I don't, like, he, he said it, it's like you would have to combine a couple of interviews, basically. Where he's like, okay. there would be no changes to the Game Pass price when we acquire Activision Blizzard. And the next one was like, we have no intentions to raise the price in the next year or so. So I'm like combining two different interviews kind of thing. Yeah. Um, almost paraphrasing, but paraphrasing off of two paraphrasing. Awesome. And it's, I don't know, man. I, the feeling stays the same. He should, they should not be raising the price is what I think. I mean, I, I knew that they would do it eventually because I the agree. value is so astronomically huge, though. No. Yeah. I mean, look, twenty dollars is—that's a lot for some people. But like, lot. what it was before, dude, that was nothing. It was nothing before <laughs> with the benefits I, you got. Listen, I, uh, I, my, my love for Microsoft and Xbox is just by the month, just like it's nose diving like a nuclear bomb that's just gonna eventually just culminate into a mushroom cloud. I feel like because it's like you have this, you have. It's like not the pricing. I don't even care about the pricing. What really annoys me is the fact that we are now like they are now like essentially commoditizing the day and date aspect of Game Pass, and they're like just completely ostracizing it from the lower tiers and just making it yeah. into ultimate. And that's yeah. I, I feel like that's what kind of annoys me because it's like I mean there's certainly other things they could do for ultimate. Like obviously like you could restrict like cloud gaming access. Like that's understandable. If you want to keep that in just ultimate, I get that like yeah because um, that's the server cost right i mean it's yeah like, like, like actually just all of this is a server cost if you think about it because now you have mm -hmm. to be online to play any of these stupid games you don't it's actually own them so you, they need servers that might be why the azure servers keep getting worse and worse and none of my shots <laughs> register <laughs> the plot thickens dude <laughs> anyway Man. sorry I, no. I just thought about that uh, it's like it's just i uh, yeah i don't know I, there's just there, there's like again it's just like I think every month it's just like there's some there's some other like there's some other caveat there's some other cliff note that gets added there's some other yes. like rule that gets changed and it's just like it's just heading in that direction wrong. where it's just like I just don't I don't have a desire to like get ultimate and it's like I have a console now it's like yeah I still am like I still have not gotten ultimate yet even though like I I think my roommate might have gotten it because he got it for like a dollar or something like that on the promotion but it's like same I that's what happened to me too yeah but it's just like. It's just like I don't want to like just out of protest. I almost don't want to get ultimate, even though it's like I have the console now. It's like it would make sense because like I have the PC and the console, and so like yeah, it probably make the most sense now. But it's just like it's just I struggle to like do that, and I don't know. Maybe I'll eventually simp and give in, but at least right now I'm just like I don't, I don't, know, I don't think irritating. you should. I think I think you should only do it if one you can afford it. That just goes. Oh, yeah. I, I know <laughs> you're good, but I mean minimum, like yeah. for everybody, for everybody, yeah. but like. If you can afford it, then okay, you have a different mindset with it. Um, I can afford it, but the thing that like allows me to justify it is the cost I'm talking about for the ultimate because I have ultimate is when I'm traveling and I'm in a hotel by myself for like two days, yeah. really. <laughs> and it's like late in the afternoon. If I just bring my Xbox controller, put it in my case, and I bring my tablet because I take my tablet with me every single time I travel. I download a bunch of movies and like the three different apps that I have, like yeah. Netflix, uh, what is it, Disney and HBO. Like I'll download whatever I can just to keep me preoccupied in the flight or watch TV shows. And then when I'm at the hotel, I got nothing to do. I'll just Bluetooth connection and use the hotel internet to stream games. 
Because okay. that's like one of the good things like you can that. do with the ultimate. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's not a bad experience. It's kind of it's, it's slow. You should only play like single player games that aren't oh, yeah. demanding. But that that's like a very niche person that does that. When you keep raising the race like this, I think they're just trying to push like how far can we go? It reminds me of when like the old school X, original Xbox days when you would have day one releases on games and they'd be like, okay, here's day one DLC that's an extra 20 bucks. It's like, bro, like, why didn't you just put those games or those maps in the game or like that DLC in the game before the launch? Why do I have to download it? I don't know. Those days are gone because we don't have CDs anymore that can hold 100 plus gigabytes of data. Physical um, media is not. Yeah, not physical media is just, yeah, it's just not a thing anymore. But I kind of digress a little bit. It's just, it's just the evolution of like trying to see how far we can push people to give us more money. And I thought Microsoft was different, man. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's so, I just thought, yeah, dude. I thought it's they were so a little true. bit different. I didn't think they were going to ask yeah. for more money, man. I didn't think it was going to be I, like this. Like, Bro. I expected it, but damn, dude, you're going <laughs> to put a gap on like day one passes? Like, know, that's the whole dude. reason you like, were I selling like, Game Pass. I, I feel like it's so harsh. Uh, so I don't know, man. It's like, dude, it's that was so their harsh, number one dude. selling point. That was their number one selling point. Yeah, it's like, oh, Game like, Pass? Actually, you get it day and day. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I mean, granted, you didn't know which games they were going to add to Game yeah. Pass, but at the same time, it was like. <laughs> Dude, that was sick. That was awesome. Yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, this new game came out, and I either gotta buy it or I gotta wait a year. It's like, oh. but if I buy it now, do I get a refund in a year when it's on the Game Pass? No. Like, you don't have. So ultimate. why would I have? That's why crazy. would I have Ultimate Game Pass? That's crazy. You don't have Ultimate. That's what bro? I'm saying. Like, why would I? Like, like, what's the incentive? And you don't really own the game anyway. You have to be connected online to use the freaking game now. You have Ultimate. It sucks to suck. You understand? <laughs> like, That's what they're saying, sucks dude. Sucks to suck, buddy. I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait until there's like... Honestly, I could see this going to the European Union for consumer protection laws. I'm because that's... I would, the yeah. argument I would use is if you do this and you add games that everybody else can have on day one through the subscription service, but you give it to them a year later, if they buy the game... And then they get it for free a year later. You have to refund them the value of the game. Be snapping. Because otherwise snapping. you're paying for the game twice. Oh, God. Yo, take it to the union. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I will. I will. I have a British passport. I'm going to go, go write a letter to the king. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> but this anyways, is that's... real, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, this is going to upset a lot of people. This story just came this week, so... Yeah. It's going to take some time because all the Gamescom stuff is like really distracting people. But, but the it, moment they're like, wait, what did Xbox dude, do? People are literally going to get on December 9th. Whenever Indiana Jones comes out, they're going to load up their thing. They're going to be all excited. Oh, and then it's going to oh. be like, would you oh, like no. to join Ultimate? <laughs> like, oh, no. What? <laughs> and, then, and, then you're, and then you're cooked. You have Absolutely. to join Ultimate if you would like to play this game right now. Or you can purchase it first in $70. Excuse yeah. me? If there's a... If there's like a big enough outrage, they'll backtrack for sure. I mean, guaranteed. Yeah. True, it's what they all do. True, bro. True. Sheesh. There's one thing you all can right, backtrack though, baby. There's one thing. There's one thing, and that's uh, an event. The game's it's good calm. or bad. It's good or bad. Whether you like it or not, the game's calm, calm, dude. Jeez, bro, you gave me the biggest article. Listen, I dude, appreciate you though. Break it up, dude. It's a big one. I'll try my best. If uh, if you come across something that I miss. Please in interrupt me. I got you. Give you a little two cents. I'm just going to try to get through it. So the main headlining event that we're talking about this week is actually Gamescom 2024. It happened out in Germany. I don't know what city in Germany, but I would imagine it's like Cologne or Berlin, one of the big ones. Uh, yeah, Cologne. Yeah. It's got to be Cologne. That'd be sick. I mean, they just did Counter-Strike at Cologne. They took it to the cathedral or whatever they it was. What's up? I'm just saying. Oh man, it's freaking dope. All right. So it's one of the major events that we like to cover here on the MT podcast. Usually it's um, Summer Games Fest, and it would be E3 if they did that anymore. <laughs> it's been kind of replaced. Yeah, we're gonna get and then, of course, we got you know, it's Yeah. So this is a team effort coming from IGN. We figured it would probably be the easiest thing for us as uh, 
reviewers. I mean, Kyle and I both watched the YouTube broadcast of the Gamescom. Um, I I watched it the remainder of it today. Actually, yep. I <laughs> yep. watched like I watched like two hours yesterday, and then I finished the remaining fifty minutes yep. today. Um, yep. Did you watch the indie showcase? I no, I I didn't catch it. So neither did I. It, it was only it was like less than an hour long, and I was like, we there's so many other indie showcases that we watch. Like yeah. Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox all have their own individual. Yeah, so like, I'll probably check it out my own time. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. So this is Gamescom 2024, the biggest announcement so far, according to IGN. Um, it looks like they did this in order. I did a quick little scroll through, and I thought that was kind of cool, just that they're doing it in order. But I'll I'll read the first few uh, little things, and then we'll get into it. So Gamescom 2024 is in full swing with some of the biggest video game announcements of the year already making their way out of the event. The show kicked off with opening night live yesterday, and we're already received a ton of exciting news and game reviews from the show. Now to follow up in the opening act, Xbox is having daily live streams, which is pretty cool, and they're going to talk about their upcoming releases in depth. So, getting into it. The first thing that they ended up showing Believe it or not, is Borderlands 4 is confirmed. Dude, the trailer looked insane. Dude, it yeah. looked like a planet going through a yeah, portal, the ripping like through the space-time yeah. continuum. Is insane. It was insane. Like it looked like something that picked up Star Wars. The, cl- the classic mask and just like held it. Yeah, it looked wild. Yeah, sir. Um, so, yeah. so cool. I actually haven't seen Borderlands the movie. Somebody recently, like I haven't I either. Who did I see over the? I saw somebody over the weekend. They're just like, "Yo, you want to go see Borderlands with me?" And I heard it's really bad. I want to go watch it with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard too. I was watching the. I was watching that Game Rex video you sent, and like, yeah. I forget his name, but he mentioned like he was like he's like I'm not surprised that 2K is doing the game and announcing the game so soon because that movie, man. I was like, oh no, <laughs> yeah, as quickly yeah. as possible. <laughs> oh, that's rough. I forgot. Uh, I gotta remember who I was with because they literally told me they were just like, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." It's one of my buddies that's like not even not even into video games that much. <laughs> he's like, "Do you want to go watch Borderlands?" We were watching the Everton match at the bar at like 10 a.m. And he's like, "You want to go <laughs> to like go watch the and... Borderlands?" I was <laughs> like, "I got things to do, but yes, <laughs> I do want to go watch." He goes, oh. "I heard it's terrible," and I'm like, "That's fine." He goes, "I want to see a bad movie," and he was like being genuine. Yeah. He wasn't being yeah. like, yeah, "I feel so, it." It's like, all right, let's get into it. What? So let me uh, let me read the description. So hot off the heels of the Borderlands movie coming comes the announcement of Borderlands 4 that it's actually happening and it's going to be coming in 2025. The game was announced with the teaser trailer that apparently contains several secrets that fans may not catch on their first watch. Uh-huh. I need to go rewatch it. I don't, I don't really it. know. Um, although the title of the game is Borderlands 4, it's actually going to be the eighth game in the Borderlands series, which is pretty sick. Uh, jumping into a cult classic, I feel like it's a cult classic, is Sid Myers? Myers? Sid Myers. Myers. Sid uh, Myers. Myers. I always mix it up. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, Civ 7, Civilization 7 release date was officially announced. I've seen a couple of trailers, I think, or like behind the scenes footage of some YouTubers playing it, and it looks phenomenal. And the trailer holds yeah, up by Hurricane. Too. Saying, <laughs> yeah, you can hit by anything, bro. Elements, dude, they're out there. Honestly, yeah, I mean, graphically, it looks amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, from what I've heard, it's you know, it's there, it does seem like there are differences in new elements now, so it's not just like yeah. a rehash of six. It's like there's like they actually put some thought into it. So yeah, I don't yeah, know. exciting. It's very cool. So the fans of Civilization games will be happy to know that not only did we get to see gameplay on the upcoming game for the first time, we actually have a confirmed release date. Civ Seven will be releasing February eleventh, twenty twenty five, PlayStation on PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. So it's gonna be interesting to see it on the Nintendo Switch. Oh. Graphics gonna be kind of interesting there. But I see yeah. available on the cloud. I'm just calling it now. Yes. <laughs> Probably so. This one, the next uh the next thing in this IGN article that got me kind of interested, I don't even know what to think of it. So the guy came out on stage, the guy that was like showing it off and he started crying. Passionate. You could tell. He started crying. He was like, I love games. This means a lot to me. We've been working on this for a long time. And I was like, yo, I got to. This this is our love letter to games. I'm like, bro, if you have that much emotion behind it, you know that my man can't talk and he's crying like he's at a funeral. Oh, yeah, dude, let's go. So this is Amazon's secret level series. 
it was a trailer and Kyle over here, if you got the video on, it's actually being yeah. shown. It looks like a collage of a bunch of different yeah. games. Uh, like just yeah. all meshed together. So I'll, I'll read the description because this is going to do way better than I possibly could of describing the trailer. So one of the most popular reveals opening night live was an upcoming Amazon series called Secret Level. It's an animated anthology series from the creators of Love, Death, and Robots that focuses on a series of new short stories from one of the most popular or from some of the most popular video games. Secret Level will include 15 episodes total that will feature stories from games like God of War, Warhammer 40K, and plenty more. There was a uh, which are the big ones that you actually saw? Oh, th look at this. It has, we have a breakdown of every video game we saw in the trailer. Let's, oh. Let me see if I can click on this quickly and I'll. Okay, so yes. Armored Core, Crossfire, Dungeons and Dragons, Exodus, Honor of Kings, um, Mega Man. That was yeah, yeah. nuts to see that. Yeah. Uh, New World was on there. The Outer Worlds 2 was on there. Pac Man. Okay, pretty sick. Um, God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, and Saifu, Spelunky, which I think you know about, um, Unreal Engine, or sorry, Unreal Tournament, Warhammer 40k, the mystery game, um, is apparently on here, is like, some people don't even know what one of them is. An un unreleased and, game. Yeah, an unreleased game, so maybe the future. Yeah, but, uh, I'm, I'm interested, yeah. and I think this could be pretty cool. Yeah, dude, Kratos stuck out to me when I saw Kratos, I was like... Oh, yeah, All right. that's tough. Yeah, it, lo like it looks old... it looks wild. I definitely think I want to give it a watch. So, Heck crazy. yeah, dude. Oh, buddy, I just got the alpha key for Splitgate. Let's go. Oh, All let's right. go. We're gating, baby. Let's go. We know what we're doing tonight, baby. Bro, I better see a stream of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get on there and stream. Like and, like and uh, subscribe, although I don't have subscribe. I might call you. I enabled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the uh, on the Twitch, that's the only thing I really stream to. I should probably stream to the other platforms. Anyways, myself plug out of the way. The main event, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle release date was officially announced. We're talking December 9th, Xbox Series X, NS, and PC. It was also announced that PS5 will have a version, and it's currently yeah. in development and it'll be released in spring 2025. Pretty cool. And I think that's pretty awesome that Phil Spencer was the one that basically came out and said, hey, we're going to go to the PS5. So, yep. pretty cool. Pretty yep. The redemption arc from the debacle that is <laughs> the ultimate game pass. Is it though? Is it though, Mike? Let's really think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the trailer? Did you like it? I thought oh, it was yeah, pretty dude. cool with like the actor kind of showing how it is. Yeah. I mean, dude, come on. It's Troy Baker. He's the goat, yeah. dude. Like, he's so much stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm looking forward to his portrayal of Indy. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to play it. It's one of those games, like, without a doubt. I'm definitely going to play it, so. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, who knows, dude? I might have to uh, fork over $20, you know, dude? Because I don't want to spend 70 but. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that's what it is, I guess. It is what it is. But you can go ahead and pre-order the game whenever you want, apparently. Um, I thought it would look pretty smooth, and the trailer was interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's go a little bit further. There was a little bit of a all digital Xbox Series X release date that is October fifteenth. Um, no. it's gonna be kind of cool. All digital. You know, I was at a Goodwill and I saw the Project Starlight or Project something, whatever the Xbox One X was. was uh, like, a like Project Scarlet? Scorpion. 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 Scorpio. Scarlet. Scorpio and Scarlet. Those are two I remember. <laughs> Scarlet. I think yeah. it was Scarlet. Scorpio. Yeah, no, was Scorpio. Scorpio. Scorpio was One X. I think. I can't remember what Scorpio yes. was. I think it was Scorpio. One X. It was the one after yeah, there's, the Xbox One. There's one at a Goodwill, and it was $180. <laughs> and then I then I looked on eBay, and they were selling for like $300 with the box. Ah, I so see. it's like I th people like that box, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. You want the whole set? It... Yeah. So <laughs> Xbox continues on doing variations of consoles. That will be dropping October 15th, like I said. Uh, Genshin Impact came along and said they were coming to Xbox, which is pretty, pretty big deal. Very popular game, taking the world by storm, it seems. That's coming November 20th as well. You got the next Dying Light game was announced. Oh, yeah. That trailer was kind of sick. I don't know much about Dying Light. Have you played Dying Light? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played the first game. Played some of the second one. Um, yeah. yeah it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a zombie parkour game. A very melee-based. Yeah. 
Um, there is some shooting, especially in the second game. There's some guns. Maybe in the first game, too. I don't remember, but... But it's one of those games, it's like, you know, there's a day and a night cycle, and at night, it just gets crazy, you know? So it's like you're yeah. just not supposed to stay out at night. Um, but yeah, makes sense. I mean, the, the, yeah, but the, those games are a lot of fun, so um, it's cool to see that, you know, they're continuing that series, because I wasn't sure they would. Um, it's also crazy, I think it's, it's like over two years old now, I'm pretty sure. I think it was 2022 oh, yeah. came out. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's one, old. Second one, that is. First one was like 2016, 18, yeah, something like that. Um. But yeah, yeah. I never got into those games. I when I first saw the trailer, it reminded me a little bit like how Far Cry has those crazy flying animations mixed with a zombie <laughs> game. No. So you say it's parkour zombies. It's like yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's parkour zombies. So similar to kind of um, yeah. There's Dying Light, similar to kind of uh, what's the name of that game? Oh my gosh, Dead Island. Something enough. I think it's yeah, like Dead parkour, Island, yeah. kind of melee zombie game. It's kind of in that vein. Yeah, that game's so. pretty sick. Yeah, well, um. New edition got announced. The real trailer. That's pretty cool. Uh, something came, dude. I was dying when I was watching <laughs> this. So, Goat Simulator remastered. Oh yeah. Now, uh, barely anybody in the entire audience was interested. You could kind of tell they were like, <laughs> "What the heck is that?" They didn't understand it. Um, Goat Simulator, bro. Goat it's Simulator silly. is not meant to be taken seriously and is stupid fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, dude. It's silly. It's silly, yeah. dude. So it's supposed to be. Yeah, I had a good time on it cool thing was uh, another game that was announced or well dlc i guess no nah, dude physical no, lego smike my bad dude my it's bad that's what you were showing me before we started talking oh, that's crazy so lego partnered with nintendo they got a new mario kart lego sets that are announced it's coming january 1st um you were showing me i think donkey kong right yeah dude you got yoshi yeah donkey kong yeah little toad yoshi's on here that's pretty donkey sick kong was a little Banana peel and Target. Dude, those things are going to be crazy. Collectible. Yeah, Mario and Luigi with the little shells, too. Yeah. Oh, well, let's do it, though. Those are going to be crazy collectible. I kind of want some. I got to add it yeah. to my collection. I got, got my little Peach. warthog over here. I don't think I've actually showed this on stream. Oh, dude, that's sick. Like, yeah, dude. Uh, dude it's a little, little toad, little Peach, little, I forget his name. He's Bowser's baby Bowser. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. I think this is his name. Yeah. I don't uh, remember. I, yeah, dude, I'm the whole sure set. There's... You got the parachute. Pretty sick, dude. I right, look. These go hard, dude. I'm just gonna say it. They go kind of crazy. Do. Collect them all now. New sets will be released January first. Wow. Uh -huh. New Year's Day. I'm into it. Uh, there was also some new Fallout merch that was available that got launched. You were showing that oh, yeah. off right before we started. Yeah, going last. You were going through all of it. I was looking at some. Yeah, of it. I, it's pretty cool. They stuff. look clean. That's yeah, they cool. look clean. Jackets look good. The jackets look like, I mean, they they look like heavy duty, and they're they got like actually stitched yeah. numbers in it. It's not printed, so it's pretty sick. I think I think the way they did it looks like kind of Letterman jacket, but it would catch people off yeah. guard that don't know what Fallout is. Now I know the success of Fallout, the TV series, is going to make people more aware of the game, yeah. like for the normies. But yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like the the main topics of discussion that really appeared. Um, maybe there's some more things that I can add on if I pull up game ranks and I, I showed this to you too, yeah. his YouTube channel. Dude, I love his YouTube channel. I aspire for us to be like <laughs> his YouTube channel. Um, yeah, he just, um... they just do a really good job of like explaining everything. Um, let's see. I pushed that in our group chat, right? Yeah. I'm about to pull it back up on my side. Um, yeah, no, no, no it's not off. the group chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I let's got see. it. Please tell me they put together timestamps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there were a couple of items that I was they like, did. yo, we should definitely cover this. Yeah, for sure. Um, All right. So, Arc Raiders, if you want to jump to that. Okay. I thought that was kind of interesting. It's at 409. Yep. I have, so this is just entirely cinematic. Yep. I have no idea what this is. Yep. It just looks intriguing. It looks like post apocalyptic. You're by yourself but you're in the future because you have a drone helping you out. You're scavenging and stuff like that. There's robotic, like, little spiders crawling around. It's like, what the heck's yeah. going on? Yeah. Um, it's intriguing, and the way they were communicating of the atmosphere seemed very interesting, too. Yeah, yeah. they convey it as a extraction shooter, which, you know, yes. could go crazy. Um, I think the biggest thing, when I heard this, I immediately thought of you, was that the people that made this were actually the same group that worked on the finals. So. Um, oh really that, yeah it's that same team so that's what he oh, said in the video dude. so 
So I mean, it's it, it looks I like it has that. a similar aesthetic, where it's like kind of the yeah. you know um, similar art style sort of. Um, yeah. So yeah, but he mentioned that the video is same people at the finals. It's an extraction shooter, so it's obviously different. Um, but yeah, yeah, dude, looks uh, I don't know, yeah, for cinematic, it looks pretty nice. Yeah. That's like, pretty sick. Maybe uh, maybe I did hear that. I, like hmm, just yeah. seeped in my subconscious. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but yeah. This one right here is um the one that's playing right now. I just fallen into yeah. this one, and I think then we can jump over to Batman Arkham, uh, Marvel Rivals. Rivals. I, what is happening? It yeah, looks like know. a super comic book hero kind of. Yeah. The gameplay itself looks really sick, but um, it looks really sick, but I don't know what type of game it is really. Yeah, almost just looks like a, I don't know, it's like a multiplayer fighter of sorts. That's what it comes yeah. off to be, but. Um, yeah, but how many of these are being released right now or going to be released in the next year? Yeah. Which I mean, it so looks it like, really I mean, is... for super, for like a superhero, like game like this could go crazy. I mean, you could do it right. I think it's, yeah, I think it's definitely a, it's a fresh take to kind of the Marvel universe of doing a game like this because you haven't really seen one in Marvel like this. So, I mean, it could be interesting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see it, see more. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, get to beat people up as Captain America and Groot and I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, that's true. It it could go really cheesy though. That that's the I only thing know. about Marvel stuff because it can just be really yeah. cheesy and it's like, ugh. you Don't know what they should that, do, yeah. man? Like they they need to make an X Men video game. Yeah, where it's <laughs> like, like fighting cool. base and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. like there 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 are two Wolverine games that I played that I like really enjoyed. They yeah. were stupid. They were like authentic to the comics, really. Yeah. But they were fun, um, no. all revolving around like Wolverine. Of I mean, course. yeah, with Wolverine, I, I didn't even mention the top dude. I saw Deadpool Wolverine, and it just makes me want to like see it watch Wolverine, dude. <laughs> Some of those things, yeah. like, yeah, it's you know, makes me want to see more Wolverine. But, but yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta watch that movie. It's Thanks good, for reminding man. me. It's good. I should just go buy tickets for tomorrow and go see it. Should, Honestly, dude. why not, man? <laughs> you know what I'm Facts. Uh. Yeah, so Herdling, the next one that was literally just playing, we're going to do this one and the next two, I think. Uh, Herdling okay. was kind of interesting. It was showing um, basically your very laid back herding simulator. Yeah, exactly. Herding like, like random like creatures. Yeah. And it doesn't look intense. It just looks like feel good kind of stuff. Uh, then you got Batman Arkham Shadow, which looks like a VR game, I think. I that out. was my impression. Yeah, it's a VR Batman game. Uh, it looks sick. looks fun. Yeah, it's VR, as you can tell, like the way they're moving. Yeah, harmless fun. Yeah. VR is not really my type of thing for, but for people that have like the headsets and stuff and all the equipment, it's expensive to really yeah. get in. So to see high quality IPs coming there, yeah. established IPs, that's gonna be exciting for people. It's just crazy too, Mike. Because look, my roommate has an Oculus Quest. Pretty sure it's like one of the wireless quests. It's yeah. right there, dude. I just need to, I just need Does, to tap in. <laughs> it's literally yeah, right there. Right. Does he use it? No, like he's used it a while, and so he like he set yeah. it out in the living room recently, and was just like it's communal now. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to tap in. But, yeah, um, you should 100 percent tap in. Yeah, I think sure. it's actually it, it might be coming to like PlayStation too. Uh, don't really know, but the next one, and if you're watching video, this really helps you out. But this one's called King of Meat, <laughs> King <and> of Meat. <laughs> I, you, this trailer looks insane. It looks like a mixture of Fall Guys yeah. with like I don't even know like. Almost like a Banjo hack and slash too. yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, it's a hack and slash kind of game, but you're it the user created dungeons going from one location to the next. I think it's co op only. Um, when I first saw the trailer, I thought it was a racing game like Fall Guys is, with yeah. a different twist. Um, Fall Guys is a little bit kind of goofy, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't That's... know. It looks good. It looks like a lot of fun. Four player co op. It's got those teams vibes, working together. Dude. Yeah, it looks looks nice. Um, a couple other things that were going to be mentioned is Monster Hunter Wilds. There was another expansion for that. Yeah. Um, Predecessor. I don't know much about. It. I don't even think it really even showed. Like, oh no, this is yeah. Yeah. I don't know what this is. <laughs> it <laughs> looks insane though. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. I don't know what the genre is, but neither yeah, do I. These abilities like, look go crazy. What the heck is dude? It? <laughs> the the abilities go insane. The uh. Like you have a, a whole mess of different characters you can choose Whoa. from and how to play. I'm sure like it's based on your play style of how you play the game. It looks like it's it doesn't be might yeah. have this like <laughs> feeling. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, third person. Yeah, but sort I, of ability. I don't see any like drones or anything like that that you can take out. Well, it yeah. doesn't look like an arena shooter. Yeah, I I just remember now. This is a game that's available right now, Mike. He said in the video, you can literally download it right now. Steam. Okay, uh, let's free to play. So. 
Um, that would be sick. But yeah, you let can me let me look it up. Predecessor yeah. is a free to play multi online game uh, arena. Oh, uh, battle arena! It's a MOBA. Let's go. It was the game started its buy to play early access phase December first. The free to play open beta launched March. 28th the game was fully released august 20th so yeah that yep. is out right now. now it's on all plat holy crap it's on all platforms except for the switch yeah we're talking ps4 oh, xbox one as well so unreal engine 5 okay all right the, the rating is three and a half out of five and it's seven out of ten on steam we but got an it's average game, baby let's go play. yeah like <laughs> People also search for Smite, Smite Two, Paragon. Yep. So <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the variety that you're going to be sitting in. Yeah, it's a MOBA. That's what it is. Yeah, it looks cool. Look yeah, cool. It does look cool. Uh, what's this? This next one is this a uh, linked? In the... Yeah, this. What is is this Animal Crossing, bro? What is this? <laughs> it's like beat 'em up Animal Crossing. Oh no no no! This is a uh, they're calling yeah. Um, it's got the guy over at Game Ranked. Is it Raven? No, it's a uh, Falcon. He did a really good description. He was saying that they're calling this a, like, a cozy arena, like, battle slasher kind of game. Mm. And cozy mm. just means no blood, no gore. It's just, like, right, friendly yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, like, comic, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I, I'm not too interested in that. I'm not really interested in the next one, um, Monument Valley 3. There's... Masters of Albion didn't really oh, yeah. intrigue me at all. <laughs> this was fascinating when they get they go to like a third person and you're like an ogre guy like running around with a club. Yeah, just like <laughs> I'm just like I don't know what's going on. But I don't yeah, know. and then you did this like third person helping your base, protecting people. It's like all kind of goofy. Yeah, yeah. yeah interesting. I, I don't know much about it. It just it's not my type of game. the yeah. The next one though is my type of game. Squid Game. Oh. <laughs> Squid Game Unleashed, and it's probably tied to the next season of Squid Game coming out. It's going to be on Netflix. It's a Netflix so, game, yeah. yeah. It's a Netflix game. So, yeah, if you've seen Squid Game, which I think most people have at this point, yep. uh, the game is quite similar to how it, One of the, next the, season, the TV dude. show is. Yeah. yeah, I mean... Very curious to see how it's going to go. Yeah. Could be fun. The release date is Boxing Day. So, day after Christmas comes out. Very nice. <laughs> there you go. Let's it's go. Like a nice little Boxing Day game for you if you want to play something. Heck yeah. Uh, the next two games on the list, pretty popular. Obviously, we, talked we already about talked Civ. about it earlier. Talk about that. Civilization Black Ops 7. 6 the campaign, what is this? <laughs> yeah, the Black Ops 6 campaign looked pretty cool. I like yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I'll probably be playing it. Big yeah. fan. Looks like Black a lot Ops, of fun. Maybe it's Black Ops, you already know. Mm -hmm. Secret level, we talked about secret level. Yep, secret level we talked about, no issues. We talked about Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Oh. There was Mafia, oh, the old baby. country, which I think article. Oh, my that's gosh. that's all you. That's all Listen, you. I think. Dude. Listen, Mafia. Um, I mean, if you've ever played the Mafia games, anyone's played the Mafia games. They're fantastic. Um, the remake of one was amazing. Uh, I played that all the way through, and it was very good. Um, the two re so it was a remaster. What was a yeah? It was a remaster. I think the second one, which is pretty good. Obviously, it's not a remake. Remake is you know that's where the bread and butter is, baby. Um, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Mafia 3 I never played. I mean, I heard it was kind of like, eh, you didn't really, it was kind of a hit or miss. Most people didn't really, um, I don't think care for it too much, but this is, I mean, we're, Hangar 18, I think it's the studio, we're going back into some new, some new Mafia games. This is like entirely new. Um, no, not a remake or a remaster of anything. It takes place in early 20th century Sicily, and the idea is that you are playing when the kind of the mafia first started in Italy, right? And it's like that's kind of where the origins of yeah, it is 1920s, kind of the idea. Twenties, probably so, during the Great Depression. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. You're gonna be playing in that. Uh yeah, I'm very excited for this. I'm um, this is definitely gonna be a day one for me because I just love the mafia series. So, um, Pretty without cool. a doubt, I would be playing this. Um, but yeah, Heck I mean, yeah. we didn't I'm get much. To hear that. We didn't get much. Just kind of a cinematic kind of you know introduction yeah, just, and a reveal. But and then uh, um, then, then a guy came out on stage. Basically, was just like, "This is what we're doing." Yeah. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. All um, talk, no show. Yeah. But it's okay. It's early. It's early. We do, however, have a blanket 2025 for release. Who knows if that'll change? Hopefully not. But, but it is supposed to come out next year. So that's exciting. Hopefully we keep the release. Come on. Hangar 18, don't let me down, dude. This is the way. Do not let me down. Got bonus games, dude. Diablo 4 expansion. Little Nightmares 3. I saw, I saw some Little Nightmares 3 stuff. 
Um, yeah, there's a game, I think, also that was like co-op. I think Little Nightmares 3 is co-op, but there's also a game from the same studio that's going to be like co-op based. That's like same screen co-op, which is exciting. Um, there's not many, there's not many like local same screen co-op games out there, so it's cool to see those. Um, I uh, got to hit up the boy, dude. See if they're, because uh, I have, I have one homie, dude, I always play these games with. Got to hit him up. So, oh, yeah. That's, uh, we all have one of those homies. It's like the number one way you like bring back the nostalgia. <laughs> Play with the boy that you've been playing with since like forever ago. <laughs> For I do that with my buddies all the time. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, what do you think though, Mike? Gamescom, dude. Uh, I I, I think feel like it's okay for me. It's like you know, it's nice, good reveals. Mafia was interesting. I was hyped about that. Borderlands, that was awesome. You know, big kind of announcement like that. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, it was definitely good. Um, you know, I, I like it. I don't know. It, I mean, it's, Gamescom's never knocked my socks off, but so I never expect that. But no. for Gamescom, it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like, it's actually kind of funny because both you and I completely forgot that Gamescom was happening this week. Hey, and then we both got notifications. Like, that, bro. <laughs> like, like, oh, crap. It's, it is live. Oh, no. <laughs> so we caught up. Um, I think for me, just to see, like, that there is a Squid Game Unleashed, I think that's pretty interesting. I'm... I think Indiana Jones is cool, but I don't know if I'd actually play it. I think I'd watch somebody play it, like watch like a yeah. whole YouTube playthrough and just kind of vibe out. Yeah. But yeah, the, the thing for me is the ones that are like, were already announced and we got little nudges like, hey, we're still coming. That yeah. kind of thing. Still working on it, yeah. Yeah, we're still working on it. Like, the way. Um, like, Gamescom is one of those things where I think it's it's good for developers like the guys who made predecessor, uh, pre predecessor, predecessor, predecessor. Jesus, why am I struggling, man? Prometheus. No, Anyways, no. <laughs> Prometheus. <laughs> Neo. I don't know. <laughs> um, games like that where they've been in development for a long time, and they finally like they're ready to launch and like show off to the world. I think that's always yep. a good opportunity. I think Borderlands was might be one of the bigger results, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, dude, I'll look forward to. Yeah, I think uh, it's gonna look good, and I'm fairly hyped for Black Ops Six, and I'm looking forward to playing it. Hey, Which dude. is kind of interesting because I'm not the biggest Call of Duty fan, but I'm like, I, I gotta check it out. I um, mean, you know, we'll see. They do. If I have Game Pass Ultimate by then, dude, I'm all in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> facts. Uh, oh, jeez. All right, brother. So um, that's all we really got for the people for this week. It's going to be kind of laid back until next week. We're probably going to get more news on Ubisoft and what kind of chaos is going on there before Outlaws releases. Yeah, and uh, everybody is kind of like, I don't know, Black Myth, Wukong is going to finally seep into everybody's opinions. And we're going to have a little bit more feedback from the populace, of what everybody thinks. Is it actually going to be the game of the year or is it just something that people are uh like it's new and exciting you know yeah, yeah man i will see dude I'll see for sure don't mm -hmm. know dude all right brother uh do you have anything to add before i wrap up here before uh let the people go dude i don't know dude apparently i need a nap but i need oh you're tired i <laughs> know oh, a little bit <laughs> Hey, dude. That's okay. We power through, baby. Yeah, and that's why I did a pre workout. I gotta, I gotta make sure that I can run off, do some chores, eat some food, okay. go get on the treadmill for okay. about thirty to forty five minutes. Hey, that's, okay. And then take a shower, okay. and, like not fall asleep until three a.m. <laughs> and then start the day over. <laughs> oh, dude, your guy, this guy, the sleep schedule, and it's crazy. It's it is crazy, dude. It is so chalk, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it dude i'd be dead, dead. pretty much i've been pretty much 3 a.m to 8 8 30 for the last year and a half and on the weekends <laughs> it is it is like 1 30 i think i go to bed earlier on the weekends than i do during the weekday and Probably says i dude. sleep i sleep to like one or two <laughs> <It's so bad. laughs> but premier league is this weekend I know, games it's starting like, 10 oh, gotta get up now <laughs> yeah i don't miss dude i don't miss games it's funny though because it's like i'll wake up at 8 8 30 for the weekday to go to work 
Everton plays at seven. I'm up at six. <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> Saturday. Uh, dude, it's it's rare. It's rare y'all get those seven a.m.s though. Huh? I feel like it's rare. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of rare. I don't know. We probably had like three of them last year, possibly. I don't know. Not true. Seven a.m. is rough, dude. If I lived on the West Coast, that'd be five, dude. Yeah, no, no. that'd be four. Psych. At that dude. point, I, <laughs> at that point, I'm just staying up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just rolling over, baby. Yeah. yeah, it's like if I'm going to bed at three o'clock on the West Coast, and my game starts in an hour, dude, I'm staying up. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to sleep when I hear the birds. Oh, at the man, yeah. it's <laughs> West Coast hours. Oh. Oh. They got the best times when it comes to like baseball, basketball, and football, though. Like American sports. I'm, I mean, yeah, that's true, dude. It's the best, it's like, dude. You end early and start yeah, early. They, yeah. Dude, they like they get to get off work, go straight to a bar, sit there, have food, and then like the game starts. The game's over with. They get to go to bed by nine. It's so nice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for us, oh, man, man. Monday night football, dude. Monday night football ain't ending until like midnight. Now. It's rough, dude. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough it's to watch those like games. Easy. I mean, and they keep I, you know they keep making it longer and longer and longer too. Adding more commercials, I mean, adding more delayed games, adding more challenges, dude, penalties. Nah, dude, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it, um, NFL this this year might be unwatchable, bro. I, I hope it might not. Be unwatchable. I mean, probably not wrong, but it just yeah, it was it got bad at some points last year. It's just it's gonna be really know, bad. Um, yeah, it's, I'm gonna join like five extra fantasy football leagues to stay intrigued. <laughs> yeah dude you know my nfl fantasy app I, I think i joined like two leagues last year just random leagues probably gonna do like three random leagues <laughs> not oh, yeah. just to it's the way. stay in i uh, do it's yeah I don't know, i'm looking forward to football but yeah it's uh oh man it, it, luckily if like a monday night game sucks it's like you can at least just like hop off early it's like ah whatever <laughs> it's like just something exactly better. dude that's all you can do yeah. but hey brother man um let's just go ahead and let the people go um Yep. I gotta do all those things and it's starting to get late. And we've been ranting. We've been yep. chatting for a while. So no. hopefully everybody's been having a good week. Hopefully everybody got a chance to play Wukong. Hopefully that was actually good. That'd be nice if it was. Yeah. Everybody seems to True. enjoy it, man. And I want to get on that. But yeah. I'm gonna go play Splitgate after I go do my chores. Love to see some gameplay, dude. But I got Yeah, I might stream it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right, go in there, get cooked, or cook somebody. I don't know. <laughs> Without further ado, do you, do you have anything to no, say no, before dude. we let him go? Okay, no. cool. Um, Good luck. Usual thing that we do at the end of every single episode. If you've been around, you already know. If you don't, here's the news. We have links in the description below. We have timestamps below for every single article that we've covered. We also have social media links if you want to check those out. If you want to reach us, Twitter, Discord, whatever you want, man. And uh, we just appreciate you guys listening. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We'll see you next week. This is the M2 Podcast. I'm Michael Anthony, my co-host, Mr. J.K. Heath, Kyle Heath. So we appreciate you guys. Have a lovely weekend. Play something new. We'll see you next week. Play something new, baby. Game, game, and game's gone, baby. Please. Please.